right, guys. So, got a lot to talk about today. Um, I've decided that I need to make a video series that really kind of comprehensively covers the big picture of nutritional strategies and approach and philosophy and theory for people interested in muscle gain, uh, strength, bodybuilding, the whole, just all that, fitness in general related to uh, lifting weights and recompositioning your body, okay? So the reason being, um, as you guys may or may not know, at 3D Muscle Journey, we're, we're coaches, we're professional coaches, and what we do is we help people um, pursue their goals. We have a whole lot of guys we help with bodybuilding, powerlifting, Olympic lifting, strongmen, and then just everyone who might be interested in strength or muscle mass gains. Okay? Um, we do this in a couple different formats. We have our ongoing coaching, um, which currently is reserved people actually competing or folks who are in the off-season from competing who have competed with us prior. And then also we have our one-off consultations, which can be done in a series. Uh, and without fail, something that I have learned from consulting with people in these one-off consultations is that typically the reason they aren't getting to where they want to be is because they don't have a system. They don't have an understanding of um, prioritization. And I think, honestly, um, the fitness industry and the exercise industry uh, and the nutrition industry as a whole needs to take a collective responsibility for this kind of lack of awareness uh, because very often it will present ideas and thoughts that are easy to turn into these small sound bites that are packageable and sellable but don't have any context. Um, so more often than not what happens with people I talk to is they're smart, they're well-intentioned, they have a lot of motivation and they have a lot of potential for success. However, we have the cart before the horse. Okay? So we've got this fancy little cart here. It's got the lead, but it's hooked up to nothing. And it's in front of the horse, and the horse is sitting here going, hey, I want to pull this cart, but I can't do it while I'm behind it. Okay? So this is saying, putting the cart before the horse, that means you're focusing on the details before you even know exactly what, what, the, what the whole context and the big picture is. Um, for example, you're worried about the specific carbine of your rifle, and then you don't even know where the target is you're shooting at if you're like a, someone, someone taking a shot at a target. So it's, it's worrying about the shot when you don't even know where the target is. There's no way you can hit it. Okay. So what I decided to do was build what I'm calling the Muscle and Strength Nutritional Pyramid. Okay. And it is basically a five-step pyramid with the foundation being the most important and then moving up through levels of less importance as we get into levels two, three, four, and five, okay? And then we have the overarching theme of behavior and lifestyle, which we'll talk about. So this is going to be a six-part series. This first one is just introducing why I'm doing this, what I'm talking about, and the pyramid as a whole. And then each subsequent part, I'll be talking about a piece of the pyramid. So today, it's going to be what the heck is the pyramid, where did the motivation and idea come from it, um, and then also level one, energy balance, calorie intake, and rate of body weight change. And then we'll have subsequent episodes. We'll have one for number two, three, four, five, and then we'll have an episode dedicated to behavior and lifestyle because that's going to affect every level of this. Okay? So let's just go over the pyramid. So the most important thing and where any nutrition plan needs to start is energy balance, which can also be looked at as far as calorie intake and rate of body weight change. So 99% of the people who I run into um, have some goal that's going to require either weight gain, weight loss, or possibly maintenance of weight or some kind of a recomposition while we make some changes to training or something like that. But in the end, what we'll need to be doing is making sure that we have adequate fuel to support training and also adequate fuel to either support weight loss and while maintaining muscle and performance or weight gain while preventing body fat gain in an excessive amount relative to the person's goals. Okay. Pyramid step two is the macronutrient composition of the diet. So we've got our energy balance, so we have calories which come from carbs, protein, fat, and then also alcohol and things like that. And then we have how, do, how much do we eat of those calories from each portion? Do we have a diet that is 40% uh, fat, 20% fat, 10% carbs, 5% protein. All those are just totally arbitrary random numbers, but we need to figure out 
the breakdown of where those calories come from and their constituent parts, particularly carbs, protein, fat, okay? So for all those fo folks who hear that if it fits your macros or what are your macros or blah, blah, blah macros, that's what we're referring to, how we break down the composition of the calories you're eating, okay? Because a diet will be very different even if it's at the same calorie count and the way it affects you if it's predominantly one macronutrient over another and there is a specific uh, combination that probably makes the most sense for different goals and they need to be customized, okay? Step three, um, micronutrients, minerals, water, etc. Um, so we're going to be talking about things like uh, vitamins, minerals, uh, phytonutrients, antioxidants, uh, your water consumption, fluid intake, all that kind of stuff. Um, and those of you who are savvier kind of kind of realize that, wait a minute, hold on, water is essential for life. Why isn't it here? It's because most people don't have an issue with getting their water intake right. We have a pretty good regular maintenance of that, uh, just with thirst. But, yes, vital for life probably should be here. However, um, if you don't try to have any target for water, you're probably going to be okay in most cases, but it's still worth talking about. Okay? Um, other people who are kind of savvy are going to realize that if you've got your calories in place and they make sense, and if your macronutrient composition makes sense, uh, and you don't have some kind of ridiculous choice of foods, which we'll talk about here as well, we'll probably find that micronutrients, minerals, and all that stuff kind of sorts itself out. But still worth talking about. Okay? Above that, we have nutrient timing and frequency. Um, so this is basically how many meals do you eat in a day? Um, do you need to time your nutrition relative to your workouts? Uh, this is going to be very context situation and individual dependent. Um, you know, for example, the needs of someone who is doing two-a-day endurance sessions with strength sessions are going to be very different from somebody who just does weights three times a week and the one who's in a calorie deficit and one who's in a calorie surplus, okay? Um, and also a lot of this is going to have to do with what works for someone's schedule and lifestyle. Um, somebody might, might like to eat five times a day. Someone else may need to do two times a day in kind of an intermittent fasting type of deal. So there's lots of ways to approach it. And then finally... Um, which the supplement industry would tell you is probably down here, is supplements, which is the least important part of this, because often supplements are trying to help you out with this, or possibly that, and possibly this. Um, and occasionally, they, supplements are useful because they get you to things that you can't get through a pretty normal diet. Like supplementing with creatine makes sense, because it's really difficult to get enough meat, and it gets cooked off when you, when you cook it. So you have to eat a whole bunch of sushi or maybe rare steak, in a very large amount to get enough creatine, so it makes more sense to supplement with it. Or things like beta alanine, or, or many of the various supplements which we'll talk about in that episode. But supplementation, just by, you can tell them its word, is supplementary. Meaning that it is there after everything else. It's not required, it's not a necessity. It is supplementary. So that is something that is the least important out of these nutritional concepts. However, it's still worth talking about and can make a measurable difference. So, um, all elements of the pyramid are important, but it's just more about making sure that we talk about the most important things before we talk about the least important things. Because I can't tell you how many articles I run into that are like, here are the 10 good foods and the 10 bad foods, without any mention of what your calorie intake should be, what your macronutrient composition should be. They're pretty much just focusing on the quality of those foods when you look at them in isolation. The problem is we don't eat food in isolation. We have diets. So as I like to really say to my clients and to anyone who will listen, there's no such thing as a good or bad food, but there is such a thing as a good or a bad diet. So, um, and you can also just get this from the questions you get. Anyone who's in, involved in the fitness field, or you probably just look in the YouTube comments on this, someone might say something like, um, should I take the yolks out when I, when I eat eggs? Well, that's kind of missing the whole point. Does it fit with your energy balance? Does it fit in with the fat content you have for the day? So these typical questions that I get where people are asking about this part when they have no idea of this context is the whole reason I'm making this, uh, this pyramid, this guide, and these videos, okay? So that's kind of the whole guide, why I'm doing it, what we're going to be talking about. Now, without further ado, let's get into the big one, energy balance, calorie intake, and rate of body weight change, okay? So let's steal this pen from behind you guys. Typically, we're going to be running into a couple different goals. We're going to have those who are trying to put on muscle or lean bulk. And if you want to just all out get fat bulk, don't worry about any of this and just eat everything you see. Wouldn't recommend it. 
and those who are trying to get leaner and, of course, maintain performance. Okay? So either, either one of these, if we're talking about someone who's not a rank beginner, who can probably kind of do both at the same time, uh, put on muscle mass while dropping body fat, just a function of nutrient partitioning and training for the first time. So if you're a late stage novice, intermediate, advanced, or anybody like that, um, this is going to necessitate weight loss or slow weight gain. Okay? To do that, you need to kind of know where your target is in the first place. Where are your maintenance calories? Now, for most people, a good way to just kind of ballpark this, and there's a huge amount of individual variation, you can take your body weight in pounds, multiply it by 10, okay? So like say, let's for me, for example, let's just say I'm 200, and I'm not, I'm a little over that, but we'll just make a nice even round number. So that's 2,000 calories. Then we multiply that by an activity multiplier. Now, I'm going to say activity, but it's not just dependent on whether you're a construction worker or sitting at a desk or a full-time athlete or a weekend warrior. This also includes what's called NEAT. Um, or more simply put, um, a subconscious movement, the type of th the way our body regulates energy. Because some people will sit on their butt and burn a whole lot more calories than I ever will just because I have a thrifty metabolism. Basically, the way we regulate energy is we, our body makes us burn more or less calories, and a lot of that is a function of just fidgeting, postural support or control, and excess subconscious movement. Not something we can really modify. But we're going to multiply it by an activity multiplier, which is going to include subconscious activity. All right. So I would say on the low end, you can probably expect 90% of people to fall in this range. And on the high end, all the way up to something like this. Okay. So what that means is that, yes, there are going to be people out there who need to eat 2,600 calories to maintain 200 pounds. Um, not very much for a 200-pound person. Um, all the way up to maybe, say, 4,600 calories. If I do my math right, I'm sure you guys will correct me, for someone who's 200 pounds. So a big variation. And there are people even further outside of those ranges. Um, now, if that's maintenance, then we need to decide, it's maintenance, what's the goal? If it's to get leaner, we're going to want to be roughly dropping, and I just talked about this in this month's Q&A video on rates of body weight loss, right? We're going to want to lose 0.5 to 1% of body weight per week, okay? Now, what that translates into for this 200-pound male it's going to be roughly one to two pounds per week. Okay. Now, you guys have probably all heard the 3,500 calories in one pound of fat. So if you drop 500 calories per day, you'll drop one pound a week. That's a rough estimate to start from. So if you know your maintenance, you can drop somewhere between, in this, in, in the case someone is 200 pounds, if you're lighter or heavier, you're different, minus 500 to 1,000 1, uh, kcals a day. Okay. And that should get you there. It doesn't all have to be from, from your nutrition. You can do some cardio. But I'm not going to get into that. There's plenty of other videos to watch. We're going to talk big picture stuff here. Okay? On the flip side, we have someone who maybe wants to gain weight. Okay? Now, just like when you cut or when you gain weight, it seems to be simple math. Like, oh, I go five down 500 calories, I drop a pound. Or I go up 500 calories, I gain a pound. It doesn't ever work out that way. That whole subconscious activity and, and metabolic regulation thing that we're talking about means that you may have to eat more than you expect or less than you expect to get the rate of weight loss or the rate of weight gain, which we'll talk about in a second. Point being, it's a good place to start, okay? Now, for gaining, I'm going to give you some different figures, okay? Because anyone who's a natural uh, lifter who's been at it for three, four, five years will tell you watching muscle grow is like watching paint dry or watching grass grow, while fat loss can happen relatively quickly. You can massively change your physique in a 24-week contest prep. However, it might take 24 months to make a massive difference in a, in, a, in a physique on the same level for even a beginner who's been in the gym a year and a half. Okay? So, I want to differentiate between beginners, intermediates, and advanced lifters. And I also want to differentiate between males and females. Okay? So these are going to be your rate of weight gain per month, okay? We're going to talk gain per month, all right? So 
So for a beginner, I like seeing, say, for boys, two to three pounds. Okay. And for girls, I like to see half that. Okay. Unless you're a very large female. But typically, the reason why I'm differentiating is women just don't have the same machinery um, to build as much muscle mass. And a lot of it has to do with hormonal stuff. So this is probably a good range for, for gals if you're looking to put on, to put on muscle mass. If you go faster than this, you might put on muscle faster, but it won't be this. Okay. Intermediates, we want to slow that down a little bit just because you're closer to your maximal rate of muscle mass. And now we're going to be talking somewhere between oh, one to two pounds a month. Okay. Females, once again, we're talking maybe half that, so roughly one pound a month. Okay. At the advanced level, we're going to be looking for progressive overload and recovery in the gym. So why am I not actually looking for a change in weight? Because I tell you what, if you were to talk to Brian Whitaker or Alberto Nunez or Jeff or these guys, once they've figured out their training, they're in their advanced level, um, their stage weight might go up or down even one or two pounds within a three or four year period. Um, yeah, you will add stage weight over time, but it's going to be the amount that an intermediate gains in two to three months, or sorry, one or two months over the course of three to four years. So looking at it on a monthly basis just doesn't make sense. What you do want is to make sure that you're recovering from your training and that you're making progressive increase, increases in your training. It means either you're adding more reps or more load over time. You're getting stronger, you're making improvements so that you know, hey, I passed that phase where I'm only making you know, improvements in strength because I'm getting more neurologically tied in or making improvements in my, in my form. Uh, these increases in reps or increases in load are because I must be making some changes structurally, okay? Or at least influenced by that. So focus on the gym progress. Don't try to drive your, your scale weight up too much or you'll just end up getting fat. Um, and, and that's essentially how you're going to lean bulk uh, based on your gender, okay? And your experience level, all right? And this is going to be basically, once again, how do I gain one to two pounds, let's say in this example, a month. Well, that means we need to divide that by four per week. So this is gonna be less than a pound per week, about half a pound per week. This is gonna be maintenance, or slightly, just slightly higher, okay? How do we do that? Again, remember, roughly 500 calories is gonna put on a pound of fat. Now, granted, we're gonna be putting on fat and muscle here. So I would say probably you want roughly a 300 calorie surplus here, maybe a 100 to 200 calorie surplus here, and then a slight surplus here. Okay, and it can vary between days. This needs to be your net change. Okay, so that's the big picture stuff here. We're looking at energy balance, which you have to know your maintenance to go from. Calorie intake, you have to know your goal, whether you're going to increase your maintenance or decrease, and how much is going to be your rate of body weight change. So we need to have a reasonable rate of weight loss to maintain muscle and strength and a reasonable rate of weight gain differentiated to the person to avoid fat gain. And that, my friends, is the biggest step, okay? That's 80% of the battle right there, maybe 70%, and the other 30% we'll talk about in subsequent episodes. Thanks for listening to me ramble, and remember, don't put your cart before the horse.